Pratima from Planet Physiology and today we shall learn about the process of mastication and deglutition. This topic will be dealt under the following headings, significance of mastication and its mechanism, definition of deglutition, its stages and applied aspects related with deglutition. Let us begin with the process of mastication. In simple words, mastication means chewing. It breaks down the larger food particles into smaller particles and at the same time it mixes these particles with saliva. This helps in formation of soft bolus which facilitates the process of swallowing. Mastication also prevents excoriation of oral mucosa and increases surface area for the action of enzymes. It also helps to break down indigestible cellulose wall. Now let us study the process of mastication. It is the reflex phenomenon which begins with placing of food in oral cavity. This causes reflex inhibition of muscles of mastication. I hope you remember muscles of mastication. Yes, they are temporalis, masseter and pterygoids. So inhibition of these muscles of mastication leads to drooping of jaw and causes them to stretch. This initiates stretch reflex leading to their contraction. As the muscles of mastication contract, jaw is closed and teeth approximate. As a result, food gets compressed between the teeth. Once again, the muscles are inhibited leading to drooping of jaw and this process is repeated again and again. As a result, food particles are broken down to smaller fine particles and Ultimately, there is formation of soft bolus which is properly mixed with the saliva. Mastication is under voluntary control and hence the duration of it depends on our wish. Once the person decides to swallow the food, the next process begins which is deglutition. So let us study the process of deglutition that is swallowing. It is the process of transport of bolus from oral cavity to the stomach. As you can see in this picture, this is esophagus, it opens into stomach. The arrows in this second picture indicate the course taken by the food material from oral cavity to the stomach. Deglutition process takes place in three stages. First is called as oral stage or first stage or voluntary stage. As name suggests, this stage is voluntary in nature, it means we can decide when to swallow the food. Whenever food is ready to swallow, it is kept in preparatory position, that is towards the posterior aspects of oral cavity. Then the tongue is elevated and retracted. This creates positive pressure in the posterior part of oral cavity and the bolus is pushed into the pharynx. As you can see in this picture, this is the bolus in the oral cavity. Here is the pharynx and this portion is epiglottis, this is trachea and this is esophagus. So once the person decides to swallow, the bolus is kept in preparatory position. Tongue is elevated and retracted and bolus is pushed behind. As you can see, the part of bolus is now entering the pharynx. All these events constitute the first stage of deglutition. Now let us start with the second stage of deglutition that is the pharyngeal stage. It is involuntary and reflex in nature. In this stage, bolus is directed towards the esophagus. So this phase includes the process of transmission of bolus from oral cavity to the esophagus. The components of deglutition reflex are as follows. The receptors are the tactile receptors located around the pharyngeal opening. Impulses from these receptors are transmitted by 5th and 9th cranial nerve to the deglutition center. That means the afferent for deglutition reflex are trigeminal and glossopharyngeal nerve. Deglutition center is located in the medulla and lower pons. From here, efferent signals are transmitted through 5th, 9th, 10th and 12th cranial nerve and all these nerve fibers innervate 
various muscle groups in the oral cavity as well as pharynx and bring about coordinated sequential contractions of various muscle groups to direct the bolus to the esophagus first let us understand these events with the help of picture so this is the initial position of bolus this is the pharynx and it has two openings superiorly and two inferiorly the opening at the end of oral cavity is oropharynx and at the end of nasal cavity is nasopharynx inferiorly pharynx opens into trachea as well as esophagus during swallowing pharyngeal muscles contract in such a way that the bolus moves from pharynx to esophagus thus the sequential coordinated contractions of muscles avoid regurgitation of bolus into the oral cavity or nasal cavity and it also prevents its entry into the larynx now you can see the bolus has moved into the pharynx and from pharynx it is directed towards the esophagus so even though it looks a simple process it is quite a complex process so let us study these events one by one as the bolus enters pharynx soft palate moves upward to close the posterior nares so nasopharynx is closed and this prevents nasal regurgitation tongue remains elevated and creates high intraoral pressure and thus it prevents regurgitation of food into the oral cavity vocal cords approximate and larynx is pulled anteriorly and upward this enlarges esophageal opening epiglottis swings backward and closes tracheal opening thus all these events prevent entry of bolus into the larynx approximation of palatopharyngeal fold as well as enlargement of esophageal opening allows movement of bolus into the esophagus simultaneously there is initiation of pharyngeal peristalsis and relaxation of upper esophageal sphincter thus all these events facilitate entry of bolus into the esophagus the entire duration of pharyngeal stage is less than 2 seconds During this event respiration is interrupted whatever is its phase and this is called as deglutition apnea there are two reasons for deglutition apnea first is the closure of trachea by epiglottis and second is deglutition center inhibits respiratory center this makes sure that bolus doesn't enter into the respiratory tract now coming to the third stage of deglutition that is esophageal stage this stage is also involuntary in nature and it is just the continuation of pharyngeal peristalsis in esophagus it is called as primary peristaltic movement it generates pressure of 10 to 15 cm of water in the esophagus and this is sufficient to move the bolus to the stomach as peristaltic movement proceeds it causes receptive relaxation of distal segment as this wave approaches the end of esophagus it leads to receptive relaxation of lower esophageal sphincter and facilitates entry of bolus into the stomach bolus takes about 8 to 10 seconds to reach the stomach if the person is in upright position gravity will facilitate the swallowing and bolus enters the stomach in 5 to 8 seconds as you can see in this picture bolus has moved to the esophagus this is the upper esophageal sphincter it relaxes only when bolus is transmitted from pharynx to esophagus once the bolus moves into the esophagus the sphincter closes again and pharyngeal peristalsis continues down along the esophagus as primary peristalsis if primary peristaltic movement fail to transport the bolus into the stomach then much stronger secondary peristaltic movements are initiated secondary peristalsis continues till the food enters the stomach so please note that under normal situation primary peristaltic movements are sufficient to move the bolus into the stomach now let us study about the lower esophageal sphincter lower esophageal sphincter is the last 2 to 5 cm portion of esophagus 
it has two components internal and external as you can see in this picture this is the lower part of the esophagus these are the smooth muscles lining the esophagus internal sphincter is formed by the circular smooth muscle fibers of esophagus these are thickened to form functional sphincter so please remember this is functional sphincter and not the anatomical sphincter external component of the sphincter is formed by the muscles of diaphragm and stomach so these are the muscles of diaphragm and they act like pinch cock oblique muscles of stomach form sling fibers and they also contribute to external part of the lower esophageal sphincter thus lower esophageal sphincter is made up of circular smooth muscles diaphragmatic fibers as well as oblique muscles of the stomach under normal situation this sphincter is tonically constricted it relaxes only when bolus is received thus it prevents gastric regurgitation that is backward movement of food material from stomach to esophagus here we finish with the normal physiology of deglutition now let us study what can go wrong with this process the term dysphagia means difficulty in swallowing it can occur due to mechanical obstruction to the passage of bolus either because of tumor or diverticular hernia or formation of strictures dysphagia can also be due to neurological disorders like parkinson's disease or it may be due to muscular disorders the next disorder related with deglutition is called as achalasia cardia it means inability of lower esophageal sphincter to relax completely this causes accumulation of food in esophagus it can occur due to damage to myentric plexus in the lower esophagus as a result it fails to initiate receptive relaxation of the sphincter during deglutition it can be due to deficiency of the hormone vasoactive intestinal polypeptide that is vip or due to excessive sensitivity of lower esophageal sphincter to the hormone gastrin any of the above condition increases resting tone in lower esophageal sphincter as a result it fails to relax during swallowing so what are the effects of this so this is the barium meal radiograph and you can note here the narrowed region of lower esophageal sphincter and proximal to it esophagus is enlarged due to esophageal stasis so inability of lower esophageal sphincter to relax causes food to accumulate in the esophagus as it cannot enter the stomach esophageal stasis causes infection and putrefaction of food because food is normally loaded with microbes initially it will just cause inflammation but if food accumulates for longer duration it will lead to mucosal ulceration leading to substernal pain In severe cases esophageal rupture can take place and person can die. So what is the modality of treatment for this condition? As the cause is failure of lower esophageal sphincter to relax, treatment is aimed to relax sphincter or to open it up. This can be achieved by antispasmodic drugs like nifedipine which will relax the sphincter. It can be also achieved by pneumatic dilation process. where balloon tipped catheter is passed till the lower esophageal sphincter and then the balloon is inflated to relax and open the sphincter localized injection of botulinum toxin also can relax the lower esophageal sphincter surgical option for achalasia cardia is partial myotomy the next clinical condition related with deglutition is reflux esophagitis or achalasia or gastroesophageal reflux disease that is gerd in this condition lower esophageal sphincter is weak and hence causes regurgitation of gastric contents into the esophagus this leads to esophagitis that is inflammation of esophageal mucosa chronic esophagitis can lead to ulcer formation causing heartburn Ulcers are usually healed by forming fibrous tissue leading to stricture formation and stricture can lead to dysphagia. 
the treatment of gerd is aimed to reduce gastric acidity by the drugs like h2 blockers or proton pump blockers so here we finish with the topic of mastication and deglutition let us quickly summarize the important points the process of mastication is important for bolus formation and hence deglutition deglutition takes place in three stages Oral stage is voluntary, whereas pharyngeal and esophageal stages are involuntary. Pharyngeal stage is important stage and guides the bolus from oral cavity to esophagus by coordinated sequential muscle contractions. Difficulty in deglutition is termed as dysphagia. In achalasia cardia, lower esophageal sphincter fails to relax and causes esophageal stasis. leading to various signs and symptoms whereas in case of reflux esophagitis lower esophageal sphincter is weak leading to reflux of gastric contents so that's all for this session thank you if you enjoy my sessions press the like button and share it with your friends if you haven't yet subscribed my channel press the subscribe button to get notifications about new releases press bell icon Thank you for watching and see you in the next video